This week on popular hot rodding television. Cam and Dean will explain what to look for in high performance brakes. The action is hot and furious at the Fun Ford event in Atlanta, Georgia. And why can't young rodders in the Midwest get enough of this twin supercharged PlayStation 2 equipped 91 Camaro? Stay tuned and find out. about one horsepower? I don't know how much, but I'll tell you what, on that Viper, the bottom end got picked up dramatically. Look at the suspension. We man. should be able to launch this thing to the moon now. Oh, we will. Welcome to Popular Hot Running Television. I'm Cameron Evans. And I'm Dean Scusa. You know, a lot of people forget that if you could add all sorts of horsepower to your car, you're going to have to improve your brakes. After all, you can't go fast without needing to stop, you know? Well, I suffer from that drag racing mentality. You know, we're all we really worry about is getting there. Let's go as fast as we can. Stopping, that's a secondary thing, you know? I mean, we put carbon fiber brakes on our car, not because they're better brakes, because they're lighter, so we can go even quicker, you know, drag racers. Yeah, pretty typical. Take this ZR1, for example. It's a car like this that taught the American performance enthusiasts that braking can be fun. It's got a bare PBR caliper just like this. In fact, you could even put one on your own car. It makes a big difference. No, Cam's right. It makes a huge difference. I mean, I went to the Bob Bondurant school just to see how the other half lives, you know. We were driving the Mustangs. The first thing I did was look at the brakes because I knew they couldn't be stock. Sure as heck, PBR is right there. Now the brake aftermarket, man, I'm telling you, it's glowing red hot with all types of items. Check out this six piston unit here from Bear. But you know what, we're getting ahead of ourselves. It may help if we find out how a brake system actually works. Check this out. Let's review a few of the basics of how modern brake systems operate. Production vehicle brakes use a hydraulic system to actuate either disc or drum brakes. The job of the brakes is to slow or stop a vehicle by using friction to transform kinetic energy, motion, into thermal energy, heat. With disc brakes, this is accomplished with calipers and pads that apply a strong clamping force against the brake rotor. With drum brakes, the friction is applied by the brake shoes as they squeeze outward against the inner walls of the brake drum. Because weight is transferred to the front of the car during braking, the front tires are pressed harder against the road and the back tires begin to lift off the road. So during braking, the front tires have a better grip, while the rear tires lose some of theirs. That's why the front brakes do about 70% of the work. Now the key to any hydraulic system is a physics principle. When confined, liquids will not compress. So when you step on the brake pedal, the force you're applying is transferred through the brake fluid to the brakes at each wheel. And because of the design of the system and power assists, the force you apply with your foot is multiplied many times over, resulting in pressures ranging from about 500 to more than 1,000 pounds per square inch, depending on the vehicle. Now air, on the other hand, will compress, and this is why we must bleed our brakes when it gets into the brake fluid. For safety and performance reasons, modern cars have dual master cylinders. The systems are split one of two ways either longitudinally with one master cylinder operating the front brakes and the other the rear or diagonally with each master cylinder operating a brake at the opposite corner once the hydraulic pressure reaches each wheel it forces a piston outward which in turn forces the brake pad against the rotor most production cars use a single piston on one side of a floating caliper that applies pressure on both sides of the rotor higher performing brake calipers are stationary and use one or more pistons located on each side. Excuse me, check this out. It's got rubber diamond plate. I, that seems like an oxymoron. <laughs> it's like boat racing. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Anyway, now that you see how your brake system actually works, our friends at Willwood were kind enough to send us this... What do you call it? it... Prop. Okay. Actually, what it is, it's a good visual of an entire brake system. I mean, it has rotors, calipers, all your brake lines. even has proportioning valves here in... I set it up like my funny card, 90% on the rear, 10 on the front. 
Wow, 1,400 pounds, that's not bad. I'm no power lifter. This is a manual system, so. Well, you know, that proportioning valve brings up a pretty interesting story. Check out this Master Power front disc kit. We just installed one on our Low Buck G Machine Nova in Popular Hot Rodding Magazine. And when we put it on, I mean, the kit went on pretty easily and it had all the parts we needed, it took about a day. But we put the thing on the car and the rear drum brakes, which were still there, were locking up. We weren't getting any brake pressure to the front. So what we did, we installed one of those proportioning valves, put all the brake bias to the front of the car where most of your stopping power comes from. Now that old car stops like on a dime. Yes, but does it leave change? Very funny. I mean, when you think of great braking or the best braking, you think of ABS. Now, Cam, why don't you give us a brief reason why we don't see it infiltrating the aftermarket? Well, actually, it would be too difficult to do. Let's say if you had like a 69 Camaro and you wanted to put ABS on it, you'd have to go find like a C4 Corvette, you know, like a 93, 94 vet, and you'd have to extract this computer. And it, easy there. I'm trying to talk, okay? <laughs> brief. It would be so complicated to try to get that into an older vehicle that you're better off just actually putting better brakes on it in the first place and sending it, you know? Sorry I brought it up. We'll be right back. Rambling on and on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Coming up on popular hot rodding television, Cam and Dean talk more about performance brakes, and we'll show you the twin supercharged 91 Camaro. Welcome back. It's been a while since we went to the Fun Ford weekend and checked out any of the Mustang racing, don't you think, Dean? I was just thinking that very thing in the shower this morning. So let's go, to, let's, go down to Atlanta. let's go down to Atlanta and check out some highlights. You know, there's a big misconception. Even though, yeah, you're going to see a lot of Mustangs and Mustang racing at the Fun Ford Series, Dean, a lot of people think that's all there is. And there's a big car show with all sorts of different types of Ford cars. Everything from the 302s to the Mod Motors, too. That's right. I mean, from Mod Motors all the way up to the big boys of Pro 5 if you own a Ford, even if you're just going to show it, if you own a Ford, there's something for you here. Now, Atlanta's really changed lately, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, since NHRA bought it several years ago, I mean, if you remember in the past, it was usually like one of the worst, you know, stops on the tour. Now it's one of the fastest tracks in the country. Look at the crowd, man. They're going to see some good side-by-side -side action. See what I was telling you about vintage cars? I mean, it's not just Mustang races. I mean, even they've got Ranger trucks out there, too. Like I said, there's something for everyone. Let's check out some Pro 5.0 class highlights. These are the big boys. Now, there's John Gullett and his Mustang. Check it out. Yeah, you see turbonetics, that means one thing. Small block turbo, probably what, 375 inches? That's right, he's up against Chuck Samuel, one of the faster guys in the class. Now Samuel went in the sixes the other night. Let's well, see if he can do it here. Well, he's got a tenth in the bank from the tree. Whoa, 708, 203. Dude, that is serious horsepower. Yeah, Dean, you gotta know that these things are 2,550 pounds and they're allowed to run any tire they want. So that's why they're getting so much grip. Absolutely. Now this is Doug Mangren. He had a, uh, actually a buy here in the semis due to just a, a funky number in the ladder. But he legs it out, 739, going for lane choice, but I don't think that's going to get it. No, I don't either. Check out this burnout from Samuel. Damn. You know, on PHR TV before, we've talked about a big exodus of Camaro guys going to the Mustang Wars because there's money to make. That's where Samuel's came from. Money round, and let me tell you, Mangren was up for that race, 497 light and run 739. You know, Samuel, he got lined up in the groove. He had the best car here, but just like you said, the best car doesn't always win. Now, the Outlaw 5.0 class, a little bit heavier, 2,800-pound minimum weight, and the engines are a little bit smaller. You've got to run that 10.5W Mickey Thompson tire. It's a little smaller tire than usual. Let's check out Vic Williams in the near lane against Tim Lynch. This is semi-final highlights. The cars aren't as quick, but they're exciting. Oh, heck yeah. Check out Vic Williams legging it out. 813, that's low ET of eliminations. Both Georgia cars, at least we know they'll have a Georgia finalist, right? <laughs> that's right. Now here's Ken Joe Kelly, and a lot like the last round, the Pro 5.0, he ended up having a, a buy run as well, but he elects to just uh, kind of just let it go down the track. Well, let's see what he brings to the final. Vic Williams near lane, smoking him up, and Ken Joe Kelly in the far lane. Looks like he went in deep. Oh, man, two horrible lights. Ken Joe with that 812 light, something flying off his car there. Starting to leak a little bit. But he takes the win, 855. I can't remember the last time you saw a drag race one with an 812 light. Now, I've never seen you do it. Yeah, but you know what? I'm not staging a turbo car either. It's way harder. Point well taken. We'll be right back. Still to come on popular hot rodding television. More on performance brakes and our PlayStation 2 equipped supercharged 91 Camaro. Stay tuned. Welcome back to PHR TV and our episode all about performance brakes. Now, you may be thinking, 
What's a truck have to do with performance brakes? Well, everything. After all, trucks are a little bit heavier, so their braking requirements are a little bit more. This particular truck is a Ford Sport Track as prepared by Air Ride Technologies. The airbag guys, you know, this one's a little lower. And this truck came stock with a set of drums on the back, but instead they upgraded it with a set of bare discs. And on the front, it had dinky little 11 inch brakes on the front. Eh, it didn't stop that great, it did the job. But now it's got 13 inch bare track brakes on the front of it. Pretty serious stuff. Now to learn more about one whole corner of your car where the real guts of the braking system are, check this out. You'll see it's pretty interesting business. Performance brake systems and components are designed to operate more efficiently and consistently with the ability to withstand the high heat of competition. High performance braking is about finding the threshold between stopping power, heat management, and vehicle control. There are three main reasons to upgrade your stock calipers clamping force, deflection, and pad performance. Aftermarket calipers have superior clamping force, which translates into shorter stopping distances. Most stock calipers are a single piston design with a floating mount. When you brake hard, stock calipers can twist in their mounts and lose alignment with the rotor. This deflection can cause uneven pad wear and less effective braking. Plus, pressure is only applied to the middle of one pad on one side. Performance calipers will have multiple pistons with a fixed or rigid mount design. There's less deflection in the mounting and pressure is applied evenly to the entire length of the pads, resulting in better wear and better stopping power. Most stock rotors are not designed for serious high performance driving. Sometimes the performance rotors will be larger for more leverage to stop the wheels and more surface area for pad contact and cooling. The finned area between the two sides of a vented rotor provides superior cooling by absorbing and dissipating more heat. Some rotors are cross-drilled or slotted to reduce weight and provide additional venting between the pad and rotor face to keep the pad faces clean. Sometimes a performance rotor will be lighter to reduce overall weight. At the drag strip, the brakes are used for short bursts. This is a case of lighter is faster. In the end, though, do your homework before you select performance brakes for your vehicle. Now that you've seen the hardware end of a brake system, you probably figured out that bigger is definitely better. I mean, think about it. More surface area equates to better braking. But before you go ahead and bolt on one of these big 15-inch rotors like this one from Bear, you better make sure you got the right wheels. I mean, this guy here, you're going to need at least a 20-inch to accommodate the size. Now, it would be nice to think that the brake industry is where it's at today because guys wanted performance out of their brakes. That's not entirely accurate. Wheel manufacturers started coming up with these eclectic designs, open centers, which exposed the OEM brakes and didn't look real cool. So guys wanted to put the nice rotors on with the cooling slots and the cooling holes and so forth. looked a lot better. Now, when I say cooling slots and cooling holes, maybe it's not really a misnomer, but that's not entirely what they do. Actually, they should be called gas evacuators. Early style pads actually created a gas under friction that got trapped and created a barrier between your rotor and your pad, hindering braking. These holes, well, they evacuate it and give you the superior braking that you need. Chances are, if you see a late model brake system that has these slots or holes in it, they're for one or two things. I mean, for looks, because they do look good, or for lightning, like this drag rotor here from Strange. Now, I know you can't see weight on television, but it's considerably lighter. They can get away with it and make it a little thinner because on the drag strip, you don't have all that prolonged braking like you do on a road course, let's say. One of the biggest advantages to putting an aftermarket brake system on your car is the weight savings. After all, this is reciprocating weight. Any time you lose that is a good thing. Now this is Bear's errata speed system. And what it involves basically is a lot less money than you normally have to spend, like $1,500 to get into a kit. This is less because it utilizes your stock caliper. You get all the benefits of a killer rotor. Seven or eight pounds different too, right on. Now this is a single piston caliper from GM, typical deal like you'd find on a pickup truck. And the move up from that is the PBR caliper that we showed you earlier. That's a two-piston design. It's still a floating design, but it's a big improvement. Now, if two pistons are better, you know four has got to be good. This is really the beginnings of a race car design from Alcon. And it's got weather seals, which is something you'd need on a street car. Now, here's another one that's got weather seals, but it's right off a Trans Am race car. It's where it starts to get expensive, a six-piston design. Now, if that wasn't enough, and you've got money to burn, how about about $8,000 for a set of IndyCar brakes? It'll still fit on your road car if the wheels will clear it. It actually works pretty cool because it's got six different brake pads. They work individually. 
when you buy a brake system like this, you're paying for the design of the caliper. They're trying to design these things so that they don't flex. With the flex comes deflection of the pad. With six individual pads, you don't get any deflection. Now take a look at the difference between this IndyCar caliper and this drag racing caliper. You can see that the power comes from the size. Now let's take a look at this week's rotting marketplace. Bear Brake Systems is the leader in high-performance brake systems. Bear offers high-performance OE replacement rotors as well as complete four-wheel disc brake systems. With over 200 different applications from Acuras to Vipers, Bear has the best system for your braking needs. For more information, visit the Bear website at bear.com or call Monday through Friday for a free catalog. Hemmings Rods and Performance Bi-Monthly Magazine is your one-stop marketplace for street rod racing and performance needs. Order now and you'll receive the latest issue of Hemmings Rods and Performance absolutely free. If you like what you see, you'll pay only $17.95 for six tire-burning issues. Call today, 877-HEMMINGS, or visit us online at hemmings.com. Get the 2001 Edelbrock Catalog by calling 800 Fun Team. Inside, you'll find the world of performance that Edelbrock has brought you for over 60 years, including over 55 new products like crate engines, e tech cylinder heads, shock absorbers, and more manifolds than ever before. Edelbrock has one of the most extensive performance lines in the industry. You know the number 800 Fun Team. Our supercharged 91 Camaro, next on popular hot rodding television. Welcome back. You know, this week's feature car is brought back by your popular demand. We literally got flooded over here. I'm talking about Mark Bowler's 91 Camaro Z28. You might remember it from an episode in the past where we had it right here on the pad. Now we've got it on the monitor. Let's take a look at this car. You know, the first thing you're going to notice about this car is the paint. You know, and you hate to, when you have a nice car like this, you don't really want to look at the paint, but man, that's that rainbow stuff. And check out Casey, this week's PHR video valet. I wonder if her top changes colors. The way this paint works is actually very interesting. It goes right down to the actual cells. I mean, we're talking like high tech stuff and people either love it or they hate it. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I know the kids in the Midwest that are going to a lot of the car shows, they love it. I'll tell you what, I'm a fan if it's done tastefully and I agree that this one is in fact done tastefully. This is actually Extreme Ocean by Diamond and it's not cheap. I mean, upwards of $600 a pint. Well, you know, this thing, it's not all show either. It's got 17 inch, actually those look like 18 18's. inch Budniks, Michelin Pilot Sports, Bear Brakes, serious performance parts. And speaking of performance parts, check under the hood. Not one, but two Paxton superchargers. Like one isn't enough. He thinks this thing makes about 700 horsepower. That's pretty tough for that number, but I'll tell you what, 383 Cali's crank, all crane valve train, it's done right. I like the way it's packaged. You see the way you use two K&N filters. Sometimes you see these, in, these blowers on the front of the engine. The way it's done off the back, it's almost kind of like a big ram's horn. It's pretty trick. I'll tell you what, he's got the reverse style opening hood. I mean, that thing comes open, it's a genuine jaw dropper. Now, another thing with these F-body cars, that strut tower base really does help. As you lean on it, the front of the body flexes a little bit. Check out the trunk. I'll tell you what, of all the cars we've ever done, dude, this thing has the most kicking sound system I've ever heard. Yeah, that's really what he built this car for. It's like a rolling audio video entertainment center. <laughs> it really is. That's all Orion you see back there. Orion XTR Pro 10s. Look at these puppies thump. Now, Dean, what music would you listen to on? You're a big music fan. I can't imagine it's a rap. Isn't that what these people want these these big enclosures for? That's what I seem to hear all the time. I, uh, Tito Puente, something along those whoa, lines. Whoa, 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 check it out. That black controller, this thing's got a PlayStation 2 in it. You don't even have one of those, do you? <laughs> I'm in line at Best Buy every morning to get one. They're still so hard to get. He's got one in his dang car. But you know what? That's great and everything. has got the DVD. Not very practical to make yourself look different. It's fine for that. All video, phantom gauges. Pretty cool, I guess. And here's Mark Bowler right now, getting his keys back from Casey, posing for the picture for PHR. And one thing that I really do like about this car, Dean, is that even though, yeah, you go to showpiece, as you'll see here, he actually drives the car, and it goes down the road pretty good. It's got some modified suspension, but it's not too low. Yeah, you're right. At first look, I looked at this car and I thought, well, okay, winner of best show or, or something like that, a good show best car. Best paint, maybe? Yeah, best paint, obviously. But you know what? All Hodge suspension components. You saw what we had under the hood, all done right. I mean, it's a G machine in its own right. Mark Bowler's 91 Camaro. I think he did okay with it. Oh, yeah. That's all the time we have for today, but I'm sure from our brake episode you saw there was a lot more than just pretty sights from those brakes. They've got a lot of stopping power. It's a worthwhile deal.
Now let's get to the fun part. I guess we're known for our closes of our shows doing something a little wacky. Well, you know what? HPI fixed us up once again. Nitro MT, Nitro Star 1, 5 motor. I mean, this thing's got a lot of torque and it needs to be jumped. I mean, it's got a lot of travel. So why don't I jump you? Come on. Here we go. Lay down, baby. You know, lay down, though, because I am a uh, professional yeah, did, driver. And you, you shouldn't sure? try this Have at home. Have you ever done this? Well, I'm a professional, like I said, but not at this. Okay. Uh -oh. No problem. <laughs> oh, <laughs> One no. more try. One more we'll try. see you next week, huh? There we go. Uh-oh. Keep your head down. <laughs> Boy, he's not very good at this. <laughs> see you next week. You do Let it. Let me then. try. I'm not gonna lay down though. You just do it, all right? Okay. Here we go. Oh. Let it eat. Yeah. Who's the man? <laughs> next week on Popular Hot Rodding Television. Cam and Dean discuss what goes into a performance tire and how to select one for your ride. Car enthusiasts get a chance to push their cars to the limit and sometimes over the limit at the Hotchkiss Track Day. And how bad is this twin supercharged Buick GSX? Tune in and find out. Subscribe to Popular Hot Rodding Magazine, your source for the rod and performance scene, and save 75% off the single copy rate. Each supercharged issue is packed with killer muscle cars and street rods, the latest performance parts, and tuning tips to make your car look cooler and go faster. Plus, if you order now, you'll receive the latest issue of Popular Hot Rodding absolutely free. If you like what you see, you'll pay only $9.97 for 11 more issues. America's performance publication, Popular Hot Rodding. To order, call 877-9-RODDER today. If you'd like more information on Popular Hot Rodding Television and the products presented on the show, visit phrtv.com.